So there's a quote that says, whenever I miss you, I look at my heart because it's the only place I can find you. That's so sweet. I mean, that's just a, this is a nice quote, all right? It's just a beautiful quote. And the reality is that it's nice to be missed. It's a thing that we desire from someone that we want to be with or we are with, you know, someone that we love, so on and so forth. And so many women out there are asking the question, well, how can I get this guy to miss me? How, how can I evoke these beautiful feelings and pull that out of him? And I understand why you want that and why you seek out that answer. But what has concerned me is the type of information you have received about this. Now, there are some answers to this question, and I'm going to give you three clear ways to make a guy miss you, all right? To, to pull that out of him. However, I want to start with going over some of what I consider to be unhealthy advice that's being given when it comes to making a guy miss you. Now, let me say this before I get to the first one. Game playing of any type is not healthy for a relationship. It's not good. There are consequences. It's not that these tips and tricks that you're hearing on the internet don't work, but they work temporarily. All right. They work to get an initial reaction, but it's not sustainable. So it's like, yes, you might be able to get this guy to be jealous or miss you in this moment. But once the fog clears, he doesn't feel that way about you anymore. So what's the point? You see what I'm saying? We want to make sure that if he's going to miss you, he's going to desire you, he's going to cherish you, respect you, it's going to be sustainable. And you can keep having this feeling as long as you're both pouring into each other the right things. So with that said, let's go over the first piece of, I'm trying to not say bad advice. I'm just going to use the word, you know what, forget, forget that. Bad advice. No shade to anybody, no disrespect to anybody. It's simply bad advice. The first thing on the list is when you're being told, don't let him think he's gotten you too soon. All right? So essentially, don't, don't allow him to think he's, he's won you and, and that you're going to be his too fast. And so it sounds good on the surface, right? But here's the problem. And, and, and first, let me explain, let's explain it as why they're saying this is the reason why it'll make him miss you. Because again, the, the theory or the, the belief is that if he feels like he has you, he'll take you for granted, essentially. He'll get comfortable. Therefore, there's no reason to miss you because he feels like you're basically he has you wrapped around his finger. He's already got you. He's already won. He doesn't have to work anymore, right? And this is true that th those things can happen. But what, what we have to understand is those things tend to happen with men who weren't that serious about you to begin with. Those things happen with men who are simply not best for you. That's not what happens with the guy who is actually interested, actually has feelings for you. And this is why it's unhealthy because when you meet the right guy, and he's making a real effort to be with you. And now you're playing this cat and mouse game because you don't want him to think he's got you, that you're feeling him. You now run the risk of causing insecurities to come out of him. You now run the risk of him starting to question how serious you are about him. He now starts to pull back because guess what? While you're being told to not let him think he has you, to get him to miss you, he's being told, you know what, if she's acting like this, pull back, fall back, so that she will start missing you. Do you see what's going on here? He's gonna now react with his own game playing in many cases, or he will dive deep into a pool of insecurity, and I hate to say it, but I'm gonna say it. For a lot of situations, a lot of men, those insecurities end up making them look very feminine, very soft. Maybe we'll even use weak, use the word weak. He'll look weak in some of your eyes. It'll actually become unattractive. And though, yes, he needs to get to a place where he doesn't allow himself to dive so deep into insecurity, this, it ends up looking like that. But let's face it, you not essentially matching his energy, you not pouring back into him and giving him that feeling of, I want you as much as you want me, it, it's going to start to pull the wrong things out. So, 
And this is going to be the reoccurring theme with all these I'm going to mention to you, but I'll break each one of them down. When you're dealing with the right person, these tactics will do more harm than good. So it doesn't serve you the purpose you think it will. But let's continue. And real quick, before I move on to the next one, I hope you understand when I say it'll make him come off as feminine, that you don't take that in a derogatory kind of way. I hope you understand what I'm getting at here. Uh, I'm trying to find the right words to, to, to express. I, I think most of you are getting what I'm saying, all right? Because most of you have experienced this. And he, he just comes off looking maybe overly emotional and that's just not attractive to a lot of women it's not that you don't want him to express his emotions but when he's just all over the place and essentially unstable and is is now looking like he's begging that's just not appealing for them it might it might feel good for some of you for a little bit but in the long run that's not really what you want your man to be doing you want him to love you but you don't want him to be again all, just an emotional wreck all the time when it comes to you that's just not what you're looking for but let's move on to the next one. So number two on the list of bad and unhealthy advice when it comes to how to make a man miss you is don't say yes to him every time. So here's my concern with this. So again, the reason why they're saying don't always say yes is because you don't want to be so accessible. You don't want to be so available. You, you want to give, create space for him to miss you. Again, you don't want to make things easy for him all these different things so that it essentially uh, keeps your value, so to speak, and, and gives you the upper hand in the relationship. However, let's put this in a different context. First, ask yourself, before you start telling yourself to not always say yes, ask yourself, but does he always tell you yes? What I mean by that is this. If you are dating a man or in a relationship with a man, and whenever you need him, you are he's there for you he's willing to you know handle things for you he, he he helps you out he's supportive all these things for you to turn around now and in 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 a manipulative way because this is what this basically is in a manipulative and game playing way calculate when you should tell him no you know what i'm saying because you you, you want to make sure he misses you and doesn't take you for granted you again it goes back to you're not matching his energy it's one thing to be doing that with a guy who doesn't come through for you, but then the question becomes, why deal with a guy who's not coming through for you? But if he is, you don't want to respond with, sometimes it's a yes, sometimes it's a no, because you're being all calculated with it. That's a problem. Not to mention, again, if I'm a man who's making effort, who's pouring into you, or who is good to you in so many ways, and then I need things from you, or I ask you to do things, and then you start saying no, you may think that in those moments you can come up with excuses that seem valid and, and, and won't bother him and he'll accept it and respect it. And some of you may, may be able to pull that off at first. But at some point, people start to see the BS. Even men, they start to notice. that It's like she don't want to be supportive. She don't want to help me here. She don't want to do this. She's always, she, he may even view it as you being difficult. Because if he needs something right now and now, your unwillingness to help in this area inconveniences him and more specifically at a time where in his eyes you should be able to help it's one thing if you again you generally in a position where you have to say no that's okay but when you're doing it to play this game that's a problem so my advice to you would be just be real if you can say yes why not say how are we trying to build healthy relationships by not being able to be there for our partner when we can. That's all I'm saying. If, we, if you can, you should not be afraid to say yes. If anything, I would much rather you say yes than, and, and, and see if he matches your energy than to be playing the game of saying no. And to the point of missing you, who, who would you miss more? The man who is there for you when he can be? Or the man who decides when he wants to be there for you when he, when he doesn't? Who, who do you really value more in that situation? The person who's there for you. So who do you think he's going to value more? It, it, it doesn't really help in the long run. And that's another reason why it's just a bad piece of advice. All right, so moving on to the third thing. We got five of these total. The third piece of unhealthy bad advice on how to make a man miss you is to not contact him. Now, 
This one, I want to say I'm very passionate about. Not because I've dealt with this. I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't. I don't deal with this. And this is something that you just. It doesn't phase me personally. However, I've seen so many women engage in this behavior and then not understand how they've essentially sabotaged their own relationships, sabotaged their own potential for relationship with this guy. All right. So let's let's run through it. Not contacting him. Of course, the idea is in not contacting him. He you, Again, you give him a chance to miss you. He hasn't heard from you. Now he's thinking, why haven't I heard from her? I start to miss her. Now he has to reach out to you. All these things. All right. So again, can it work in the sense of evoking a feeling of missing you for the moment? It can. However, well, as I said before, this is typically going to work well with the guy who isn't for you. And, and, and it may work or may not work with him because if he's not for you, he may not even care. He may be perfectly fine with you not contacting him and he'll hit you up when he feels like it, when it's convenient for him. All right. But remember, I'm always going to approach this from the standpoint of God forbid you take this behavior to the guy who actually likes you, who's actually serious. And now you're playing this no contact game. Well, guess what? As I mentioned earlier, now you're pouring seeds of doubt into him. Now you're pulling out insecurities or creating insecurities within him. Because let's understand something. And I, and I believe this passionately, whether it's applying to women or men. It's one thing when we call people insecure because they have carried baggage into a situation and their insecurities reside within them and they're projecting it onto their partner. But it's another thing when you're dealing with someone who is creating insecurity in the relationship. No one gets a free pass for behaving in ways that can make anyone feel unsettled, make anyone feel unsure. Again, granted, there's a, there's a line that some people cross that maybe they're asking for an unreasonable amount of attention or whatever to feel secure. And again, that stems from deeper things within them they have not addressed. But there is a, a, an amount or balance that we have to strike that we're pouring the right things into our partner so that we are not creating the insecurity. So in not contacting him, in blatantly choosing to not reach out, not only are you possibly creating problems within him and the potential where this can go, but you're driving yourself crazy in the meantime. That's the wild part about this. So many women, while they're not contacting the man, are in their head, why haven't I heard from him? What's going on? <laughs> like you, You're driving yourself nuts about this. You badly want to reach out to him, but you're convincing yourself that you shouldn't. So now, here's another thing that can happen more specifically when dealing with the wrong man. If I'm a man, if you're dealing with a man who just wants to have fun with you, right? Doesn't really want to talk. And so now you play this game of, I'm not going to reach out too much. I'm going to be careful with how much I text him or whatever. And he likes this because you're not stressing him. You, you don't require too much attention from him, right? And let's say this progresses to some form of a relationship. And I say some form because I'm not talking about he didn't magically become serious with you. He just said, oh, well, this is convenient. This is nice. He may choose to put some kind of exclusivity on it or it may just be a situation ship. Either way, he proceeds on the idea that you don't require much. You don't ask for much communication. That's very comfortable and good for him. Now, when you actually start to progress in this situation, you can't suppress the real you forever. Now the real you starts to come out. Now you're like, why haven't I heard from you? Now you're blowing his phone up. Now you're texting all the time. Now he gets frustrated because it's like, I didn't sign up for this. I thought you were cool and laid back and, doesn't, and don't sweat me. Now you want all these phone conversations and you want all my time. And now you end up in a more frustrating situation. So it doesn't work if he's good for you and, it, and, and or the right man for you. And it doesn't really help you if he's the wrong man because he's still the wrong man at the end of the day. But again, you can fall into these other difficult dynamics. 
At the end of the day, it's not healthy. It's not healthy. You want to contact that man? Contact that man. Again, I'd rather you be your true self, all right? Walk confidently in that and see if he can embrace that. See if he can then pour back into you what you require. But don't play the game of holding back in all this stuff. Not to mention, listen, an idle, what is it? An idle mind is the devil's playground. So just as you may pour insecurity and doubt into him. You Again, there's all kinds of thoughts that start to run through his head because now he doesn't understand what's going on with you. Rather than you hitting him up and simply saying, yo, I, I don't, like if you're doing this because you felt like you weren't getting enough attention from him and you figure, okay, I'll fall back so he can start missing me and showing me more attention. It would be much better if you just talked to him about it told him this is what you're looking for, and then he's either going to step up and show you that he's going to respect and honor your feelings and, and be that guy you need, or he will sh continue to fall short and it will become clear he is not best for you. All right, so now we're at the fourth one. And the fourth one that I saw <laughs> that was some, some unhealthy advice to make him miss you is to be mysterious, all right? And so, again, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but the, so one, of course, the being mysterious just goes back to, you know, that that mystery and makes him think about you, wonder, want to learn more, so to speak, you know, can create the feelings of missing you because it, it just it can it can put his mind in in that place of thinking about you to the point that now he he's wanting to reach out, he's wanting to be around you. But again, sometimes that's just creating curiosity in the man. And then, what do they say? Curiosity killed the cat. <laughs> so in, the, in this instance, he's you create this curiosity because you're mysterious. At some point, you guys connect. He, he finds out what he needs to find out. Mystery gone, and now no more missing. No, no more desiring you. Because it wasn't built off of a true desire for you. It wasn't built off of you having a connection. It wasn't built off of something genuine. You were just stirring up a certain kind of emotion that creates a certain kind of reaction, and then it's gone. And now you're gonna be looking for the next trick to make him miss you, the next trick to reel him in. But it's always gonna be temporary if it's not coming from the, from the right place. We don't need mystery if we're trying to build something special. We need transparency. We need openness. I, rather than, than making him wonder about you, show him who you are. And then either he loves it or he doesn't. Either he wants this or he can get the hell on. But we don't need to play no mystery game, all right? Now, listen, I think and, and maybe I'm wrong here, right? Maybe. <laughs> but I think that being mysterious can work more for men than it does for a woman, all right? I don't think this works to the advantage of a woman in any way, really, other than, again, soliciting maybe that initial response. I think for a man, it, it can draw a woman in even more. Also, being a mysterious man in general, some women like that because it's like, it's more that he's low key, other women don't know about him. So I now know him, but I don't have to worry about him being all over the place in everybody's face and, and being all friendly with people. So that's how some women view it. So they like him being more low key, mysterious, all these things. But again, that's just not really in your favor. And it's not healthy. And it's one thing if someone is mysterious by nature, meaning some people are, they're kind of loners. They're very introverted. They're not trying to be mysterious to create a reaction and thoughts and get people to wonder about them. They just are that way. And that's fine if you're just, if you really are that way. But when you're doing it to, again, get that reaction out of him, get him to miss you, whatever, it's not worth it. It's just not going to end in a good way. All right. And now the last piece of bad advice, and now I'm going to give you the three ways to make him miss you. Healthy ways, good, positive ways, right? But the last piece of bad advice is start dating other men. And, and from what I understand, from what I saw, is letting him know you're dating other men. 
Now, here's the thing. As a single woman, you are free to do whatever you please. If you genuinely like dating multiple people at the same time, that is your choice as an adult. I, I have no issues with that whatsoever. If you can handle it, all right? If you can handle it, you have to be honest with yourself. Do not date multiple people because someone told you that's the way you should do it. Do it because you can properly evaluate each individual. You are a great multitasker. You can handle it without getting caught up or falling into any uh, uh, struggles of how you're handling all these different men, all right? And some of you know that's too much for you. It's too much for you, that's perfectly fine. Don't do it. Just stick to one person at a time, that's the best way. I do think that's typically gonna be the most efficient way to date, all right? I And I say efficient from the standpoint of being able to clearly evaluate someone without distraction. That's why I believe it can be the most efficient way in that perspective. And it's simply about getting them in and getting them out. They're not for you. We don't need to go on four or five dates to figure out they're not for you. We can figure that out in the first couple of dates. That Hell, you can figure it out in the first date, to be honest with you. So that's how you can be efficient, but you don't have to date multiple people at the same time. Anyways, the point is, in regards to this making him miss you, in regards to this, again, creating, because essentially it's gonna create jealousy. All right, or could create jealousy. I said it once, I said it two times, I said it multiple times in this video. If he's really into you, all you're doing is making him more insecure. And there's no reason to do this with a man who is trying to be genuine with you. If he is not genuine with you, why the hell do you want him to miss you in the first place? Why are you trying to get the attention of a man who is not showing you that he is willing to show up in the ways that you need? If you have to do tricks tricks and, and, and play games to get him to show you what you want, that's a red flag right there. It's, you should not have to resort to these things to get what you need. So essentially, again, it's not that it's a problem if you do decide to date other men, if it's a genuine thing, but it should not be used as a manipulation tactic. Plain and simple. Not to mention that I've seen some women, this is what's hitting my spirit, I don't know why, but it just is. I've seen some situations where women play this, I'ma date multiple men and sometimes mistakenly, maybe sometimes not mistakenly, end up dating guys in the same circle. She may not have known that initially, so I'm not in any ways blaming the woman in, in that way, however, she got herself caught up in a messy situation and now neither man wanted her, at least not seriously, okay? Now, some of you may say, well, that's unfair if she just went on a date and didn't have sex with them. Listen, some people are very sensitive about who you, you dated that they know, if they're a friend or whatever the case may be, they don't like that. So again, could this happen if she dated one man at a time? Yes, the reason why I brought it up is to simply say, you don't want to jump into this field of dating multiple people just to get a reaction out of this guy because you don't know what other messiness you're going to put yourself into. That's, that's the point of that story. Whether it's people that know each other, whether that's, uh, hell, let's say it. Some people get unexpectedly pregnant, all right? Had a few drinks. Things went further than they should have. Bada bing, bada boom. <laughs> and, and now nine months later, there's a baby. It happens. It happens. All because they thought, well, let me do this, let me do that. And then it's like, it wasn't necessary. So again, all, all this stuff, you don't need to do that. However, here's what you can do. All right? So the first healthy way to make a guy miss you is to bring him peace, not stress. All right? At the end of the day, think about it like this. You've probably heard of many situations where men, whether in long-term relationships or even married men, didn't like coming home, all right? Would find reasons to stay out the house all night. Now, sometimes, a lot of times the assumption is, well, he's just cheating. It's not always he's cheating. He honestly doesn't like being home. Well, why wouldn't he like being home? Because being home comes with stress. Why does it come with stress? Because the person he's with, not putting it all on the woman, but there are women out there that are not mindful of the energy that they're bringing their partner. I understand that in some of these situations, the man has 
created an environment that has robbed the household of peace. I get that. However, there are a lot of situations where from the jump, the woman does not understand the power of cultivating peace in the household, of making the home a place he wants to be at. And so essentially what I'm getting at here is that if you want someone to miss you, you have to make the experience around you something amazing. You have to make it where they find peace, where they find happiness. Because now when you become my source or a source for me of peace, happiness, joy, why wouldn't I want to be around you? Why wouldn't I miss you when I'm at work? I'm going to be like, damn, I can't wait to see my girl. Hell, when I'm with my boys and I'm playing ball, man, I'm ready to go see my girl. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like wherever I'm at, when, when, when I think of my woman and all I think of how good it feels to be around her, I'm going to want to be around her. And yes, I'm going to miss her. So that's how you get a man to miss you is you become his peace. Now, a couple things to consider with becoming his peace. And yes, I know he should bring you peace too. I get that. But what I, I'll say this, and I hope you understand where I'm coming from. I think the man has to focus on his priority is to bring you security. All right. And yes, security is not just in a financial way or just in protecting you, but it's also security emotionally, all right? And I think when he does, that gives you peace, all right? But for the woman, the focus is peace itself because that's what a lot of men are looking for in their relationship. That's what a lot of men are looking for out of their woman. So a couple things to consider. Understanding the time and place to have certain discussions, all right? I think that sometimes it's very easy for a woman to get lost in her own emotions and how she feels that she loses sight of the environment right now that isn't conducive to having this discussion, where she loses sight of the fact that if he just came home from a bad day at work, this ain't the time to start going in on him about this other issue going on. I'm not, of course, we still need to have a conversation. But learning how to, to be aware of, okay, right now is not the moment. Let me give him an hour and let him know, listen, I want you to go relax and, you know, we can talk about this later. Now, of course, it's, it's, it's for the man to respect that and not dance around it and, and, and try to find ways to not have a discussion with you. So he has his part of this that he has to hold, he has to uh, be responsible for. But we're focusing on what you can focus on. And, and that's you understanding time and place. Also, understanding it's not what you say, it's how you say it. You want to bring a man peace, then you have to learn how to talk to him. Plain and simple, all right? So I never want you to not be able to express your feelings, your concerns, and all these things. I just want you to learn how to convey them in a positive and loving manner. I want you to learn how not to be so reactive so that when he does try to explain himself or talk to you or express his own feelings, you're cutting him off, you're speaking over him, you're jumping down his throat because all that does is make him want to shut down and it robs both of you of peace. So learning how it's not what you say is how you say it is going to help big time in creating peace. And then also the last thing I'm going to say about this peace thing is just how to cultivate more positive energy. And I'll say this, it's hard to give a man positive energy if you're not giving it to yourself. So your first priority is how do you cultivate it for yourself within you? All right. How do you create more happiness within you? How do you get to that place? Whether that's healing, whether that's making sure you're taking care of yourself physically, uh, mentally, all these different things so that you can be good. And I, this is hitting my spirit. So I feel the need to say this. This is especially important for single mothers and, and, and anyone who's just taking on so much as a woman. You got to give yourself some me time. You need a break. If you are not good to you, you're not going to be good to others. 
You're not going to be the best you can be for your kids, for your partner, for a future partner, if you are not pouring what you need into yourself and taking a break. I know that's easier said than done for many of you, but I do believe that if you are intentional, you can find ways to carve out some time in your life so that you can have a break. Whether that's a few hours a week, preferably at least a day a week, but I know for some that may not be possible, but at least a few hours where you pull away from everything and you relax and you recharge because you need it and it's going to help you in your overall quality of life and in addressing this specific issue of bringing peace to a relationship. All right, so real quick before I continue to the second way to make a man miss you, healthy way, is here's your opportunity to get your personal questions answered for free on my next live coaching call that I have with my membership program. I want you to go to askstefanspeaks.com, submit your question, and you'll have an opportunity to join in on that live coaching call. Again, askstefanspeaks.com. You can click the link in the description or in the comment section. All right, so now the second healthy way to make a man miss you is to tap into his love language and what he needs. I stress he needs, okay? So what am I saying here? The unfortunate reality is that I have seen a lot of women stand firm on the idea that I I do so much for this man. I give him so much of me. But what they overlook is they're giving what they wanted to give. They're giving what they thought he should be happy with. But they were completely disconnected from what he needed, what he desired, what his love language is. And so you have this this disconnect where it's like, consider this as a woman, it's almost as if you got with a man, let's say your love language is quality time and you're dating a man who is always busy, but he buys you whatever you want. He will throw money at any situation. And when you finally bring it up to him that I want your time, this, you know, he says to you, oh, you're so ungrateful. I do everything for you and nothing is good enough, you know. And to you, it's like, yo, it's not that I don't appreciate the gifts and the money, but without the quality time that, that my heart needs, yeah, it starts to not feel like it, it, it's worth much anymore. It's not to be unappreciative, but it it makes you still feel dismissed because he's not tapping into what you actually are asking for. Well, guess what? The same thing happens with men. And so when we talk about making him miss you, again, how will a man miss someone who doesn't pour into their actual needs? How does a man miss someone who makes them feel some kind of way when he asks for certain things and your response is, well, I do everything else for you. Bravo, (laughs) but that's not what he's looking for, okay? We want what we want, what we desire, and when, when you can tap into that as a partner, now again, you create an experience, you create a bond that makes someone say, I want to be around this person, and when I'm not around them, I miss them. I want to be back close to them. I, I, I want to find where they are because I want to be in their presence because they speak to my soul. They speak to my heart. They make sure I'm good. And they give me what I need, not what they think I should be happy with, but what I need. Now, granted, if what that man needs is not what you are willing or able to provide, then he's just not the guy for you and vice versa. So we don't force the issue when that's just not who we are or if it's going to compromise our beliefs and and, and go against our our morals or anything like that. Because, you know, some things that people want, they cross certain lines. I'm just going to be real. But... Other than, other than that, we've got to be willing to tap into it. And when you do that, that man is definitely going to miss the hell out of you, okay? All right. And last but definitely not least, the way to make him miss you. And again, this is a healthy way, though it may not sound healthy. So let me explain it. The last way is to never be afraid to walk away from him. And he needs to know that you're not afraid to walk away from him. Now, why is this healthy? People have this this misguided perception of like some people, 
there should be no consequences in a relationship. Like we shouldn't be trying to penalize each other if things if they're not doing what they're supposed to do. And I understand the thought process, but it's missing the mark completely. Because the reality is that consequences are healthy for a relationship because people have to understand what's at stake. Because when they don't, it is human nature to start to take advantage. Not in a malicious way, it's just that we get we get lackadaisical, we, we, we become more lenient, we're not holding ourselves to the same standard. To put it in a, in a, to give it a certain analogy, consider that you're working at a job. You love this job. This is the best job you've ever had, all right? Pays you well, you love what you do, all of that. But you find out that this job has decided that no matter what you do, they won't fire you. No matter what you do, you will not be demoted, you will not lose any money, none of it. You might say, well, no, I'm going to still show up to work the same way, right? That sounds good. (laughs) But when there's that day that comes, because you're human, that you're so tired, that maybe you're like, damn, I just want to sleep an extra 30 minutes. You will. You will because you know there's no consequence. When you know that you can be out one day and do something different, you will because there ain't no consequence. You may start to slack off on certain days. It doesn't mean you will treat your job completely poorly, but you will start to lose sight of the effort that you have to put in consistently because there is no consequence. And listen, there is nothing in this world worth having. Let me not, let me make sure I'm not saying that the wrong way. Let me just say like this. In most things that we desire in life, there is consequences. So you don't go to work on time, you can get fired. You don't pay your mortgage, you can lose your house. Even with God, you don't follow certain parameters, you don't go to heaven, all right? And God loves us more than anything. And there's still consequences. So when we are in a relationship, no one should think that no matter how how they treat you, you will go nowhere. That's when you lose. That's when everything falls apart or can fall apart, all right? What they should be thinking, what they should be aware of is, as long as they're doing their part, you will always be there for them. That's healthy, that's good, that's acceptable. But they can't think, no, I can act a fool and you're not supposed to go anywhere. And again, don't confuse that with someone having a rough patch, a rough moment, That's, that's different. We're talking about people blatantly no longer putting forth the effort they're supposed to put forth. We're talking about people now neglecting their partner in ways because again, there are no consequences. So now I can drag my feet. And so all this, so going back to how this makes a man miss you, well, the reality is this, we miss what we value. And when we think that you're not going anywhere, we, you, whoever, it is easy to lose sight of the value of this thing and understand that we have to constantly cherish and respect it and pour into it. And when we hold that value and when we, we understand what's at stake, yes, that missing you comes from, I don't want to lose this, not in a fearful way, but because it's so good to me. Why would I want to let anything bad happen here? So it is healthy to have that balance. It is healthy for them to understand what's at stake. But again, make sure that both sides are doing what needs to be done to build something amazing and special. And at the end of the day, if he's not for you, none of this stuff of how to make him miss you, whatever, even matters. You have to accept that he's not for you and let him go. But always Come being your best self, because that's how you're going to see clearer who is truly for you and who is not. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it was helpful to you. And now I want you to check out this video over here on the nine signs he wants to be committed to you. You're going to love it. And the reality is that when we are emotionally invested and we desire something very strongly, it becomes very easy for 